I'm Sylvia Gordon and Rebecca Gordon can't be here today because she had to get physical therapy. Sorry, HIPAA violation. But I'm going ahead without her because I'm getting a lot of good traction, good uh, advice from the field about what you guys like and really good feedback. So thank you guys for tuning in and sharing this video with other insurance agents. You know, it's just a compilation of stuff that happened in insurance this week. So I want to start off by talking about people that are on opioids, your Medicare clients that are taking pain medications. A lot of them now at the beginning of the year have felt the pinch with the new regulations meant to curb opioid abuse. So people are calling in angry at their agent because they used to be able to get a 90 day fill on their pain meds because they're on pain meds forever and now they can't. So, you know, it's just, we're all caught in this together so they're not going to be able to get around that. They will be able to get their fills, but they're gonna to have to go into the pharmacy more frequently and it's just the way it is. There's more barriers and hopefully there'll be less drug abuse. So agents just explain it to them. It's not like they can go get a different carrier and get around this. This is coming from CMS and this all refers back to the new CARA regulations, Comprehensive Addiction Recovery, C-A-R-A, Act. And I talked about that in some of my past videos. If you don't have the white paper on Kara, hit me up in the comments below and I will be happy to send that to you. Um, social security scams. You know, I could do a, a whole show on scams every week, but right now there's a big scam where people are getting calls on their phone from many different zip codes saying, hey, your social security account has been hacked and we need you to call in so that we can put a hold on your social security and prevent further loss to you. There's no such thing and they can't hack your social security and it's a complete scam. So please tell your clients to quit freaking out and not to call that number back and just to disregard it is a scam. I might have people in my own family that I've gotten these calls. Hospital pricing, that started in 2019. And the cool thing about hospital pricing, I don't drink coffee, but I've had people um, say it would look better if I drank coffee, so I'm drinking fake coffee. Can you, can you do a close up on my, my card here? Somebody drank coffee, I don't smell like coffee. <laughs> Rebecca's a coffee drinker, so. The hospitals by law now have to put their pricing out, which this is great for a consumer that I can say, I have to get this procedure. What's it gonna cost me? Just like any other informed decision I would make in any other product, right? So when I had my third child, I have four, when I had my third child, you know, I didn't have very much money, so I was frugal. And I had the first two natural, no cesarean, no drugs. Not something I'm really proud of, but I, whatever. So when I had Susanna, I was like, okay. And I called all the hospitals within an hour of here. And it was really cool. They varied in price between 1,800 and 4,000 for a natural delivery that it, one night overnight stay. That's a huge difference. That was a natural delivery with no drugs. 1800 to 4000 you can guess I went to the 1800 but now and that was really hard to get to now it's by law they have to they have to list all the procedures so we we're all excited about this starting 2019 that we could look and see well it's a first step in the right direction but it's a very small step because the way the hospitals have listed it we can't tell what what, what codes they're using we can't tell what's a hip surgery. So right now they have all their stuff available online. It won't help you at all. It's going to get there. It's going to take a couple years before they agree on stuff, but it is happening. It's like anything else with the government, it's happening slowly. Um, I have two guests with me today. So LaVon Justice from our life department has a Pacers hat on, but says he's an IU fan, which is kind of hard to be an IU fan right now. <laughs> Might actually be a Purdue fan. <laughs> they lost last night. Oh, God, I didn't hear that. And I have Clayton Duvall from Hello. our annuity department. And I don't know why you don't have your hogs hat on, but you didn't get the memo on that. Short notice. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, I didn't want you on my show because I don't like to share my screen time. Mm. But Rebecca asked me to invite you. So why? Why are you here? Just taking up all my screen time. We are here to encourage you, not just encourage, but really, really drive you to attend our 10th anniversary Gord Marketing Life and Annuity Expo. So I'll take it. OK. All right. So why should you come? Well, first of all, nice. we have uh, <laughs> 
We have worked really, really hard over the years to make sure that we're bringing to you the best ideas, the best carriers and strategies to help you. Yeah, uh, whatever, whatever. <laughs> with your... You know, I don't like that kind of empty talk because there's a million events, seminars, classes okay. all over the country and people are always like, hey, you gotta come to this, it's gonna be great. It's like, okay, well, assuming everything's great, I'm busy, especially your more successful agents or busier. I don't wanna just come there to see carriers. I mean, there's, mm. some, there's a value in meeting with the carriers and having some face time with the carriers. What do they walk away from this seminar with? What, what can they implement in their business? Now, how are they gonna take their life business to a, the next level? Well, they're gonna take their life business, and you will take your life business to the next level by implementing the ideas that you're gonna hear about. So give me an idea. Well, some of the uh, most powerful ideas that we've been uh, working with agents with in the last uh, couple of years has been the Your Family Bank concept. Okay, so that's pretty new and it's not widely known. Mm -hmm. How how okay. how high of an overview or can they actually leave here and understand how to implement that? Oh, I, I assure you that uh, you're gonna leave here, leave the expo with ammunition to um, attract better clients, make your business stick, uh, increase the volume of your sales and really provide your clients with some services that they're not getting elsewhere. So it's gonna separate you from the other agents that uh, are out there in the field that are may be approaching your clients or may not be approaching your clients. We're gonna do this by helping your clients address several issues in their life, whether from debt to saving for retirement, college planning, all these things are uh, issues that are facing every American and facing your clients. So that's one of the main ideas that you're going to learn about at our Life Expo this year, along with several others. So I'm excited about your family bank too. So we've been doing this for 10 years. Mm -hmm. So we kind of got it down. It's a pretty fun gig. Um, and we, we do it in March because of March Madness, because we are a basketball state yes. and a basketball family. We love Amen. basketball, so we all wear our basketball stuff. Um, it, is your target attendee a life agent? Yeah, I'd say it's, it's a person that is has an insurance license whether you're selling life insurance or medicare um there's so much crossover opportunity here so many ideas that make a lot of sense for you to um if you're not already talking about life insurance it's going to put you in a position to have a lot more confidence in doing so uh and um if you are then this is going to be some some new ideas that uh, you can certainly add to what you're doing as well so so you it's it's not too high level no. for somebody that's not a specialist in life. It, there's classes because there's breakout sessions, so people can choose to go to different things that appeal to them yes. where they are in their career. Okay, and what's the date? It is March 6th and 7th. Okay, don't wiggle a lot in your chair. They get motion sickness at home. Okay, Clayton. Yes. What's your favorite thing? Here's my favorite thing about our annual Life and Annuity Expo. No, not about the Expo. What's your just your favorite thing in the whole world? Favorite thing in the whole world? Mm -hmm. Annuity premium. Oh my God, what's your favorite thing? Well, uh, we're talking insurance? No. <laughs> Basketball, of course. Okay, Basketball. whatever. My favorite thing, don't tell my children this, but it is ice cream. Ooh. And my second favorite thing, don't tell my family this, was cats. Hmm. And the reason I'm asking this, because I found out yesterday I'm allergic to cats. Well, which is kind of crushing. Kind of Because I don't right? get, I don't get, you know, like sneezy and itchy and stuff. But I've had some other weird symptoms they couldn't figure out for years, and I'm allergic to cats. It's a good thing, Gabadinka. I love cats. So I'm yeah. a dog person, so I don't have that issue. What the heck? Okay, anyway, go back to that. <laughs> Let's go talk about the Life and Annuity Expo, which... Here are the reasons why... annuities, too, so you hit me with annuities. Absolutely. So here's why I love our Life and Annuity Expo. The main thing that you'll have the opportunity to do when you can attend this, by the way, at no cost to you, agent, is you're able to rub elbows with 200 to 250 of the top leading producers within the industry to where you as a producer can collaborate sales ideas together. Now, that's a good, a good point. Not everybody really has the personality to network because you know, not everybody's an extrovert. They don't see it. When I see a big interim, I'm like, oh, a whole bunch of potential people. Mm -hmm. And I like to just go around and meet people. I love that. And a lot of people are like, oh, I don't know anybody here. I don't meet people. So if you can get a little bit out of your comfort zone, um, networking should be a part of your skills 
you know, because you're networking to get leads. And in this arena, you're networking to get information, to get, instead of having to trial and error and waste your time figuring it out the hard way, go talk to the people that are really successful. Most people are very willing to share, but you guys aren't willing to ask them. You're like, oh, they're not going to share with me. They're going to think of me as a competitor. Rarely. Most people are cool and they're like, yeah, I do this, or I don't use this lead vendor, or I don't do this type of seminar, or I did this in the past, but you gotta ask them. So one Absolutely. of the most important things of this meeting and any meeting is that networking. Absolutely. So I just recently came back from an IMO meeting for another organization. And what I love about those meetings is it allows me as a wholesaler to rub elbows with some of my top peers within the industry. And the idea is that you can take away from these meetings. I guarantee you by the time you leave the room, okay. you will walk out smarter than you were when you walked in. The ideas are invaluable at these meetings. But in addition to that, I guarantee you, you will walk away with at least three to five new sales ideas. You'll get an opportunity to hear about new enhancements, new products, new concepts in this ever evolving industry. And so if you're not here at this Life and Annuity Expo, folks, you are missing out. Can I change my favorite thing answer? Yeah, what is your favorite thing? Free drinks. I forgot to say that. Ooh. And Great. speaking of awesome. <laughs> free drinks, we will I have... I cannot believe he said that. <laughs> oh, yeah. That is my favorite thing. Next to my kids. We have an awesome cocktail that. party. That's where I was headed yeah. with that. And that's but a good I swear, place, that's a good place like to network. Drinks. Yeah, yes. that's a good place to network. Okay, guys, do you have anything else to say about the Expo? Register today. And be sure to call me to find out how, if you're not it's registered yet, I may be able to get your room covered. So be sure to call me. I'm extension 385. What's your extension? 317. And uh, our director here will put the 800 number on the screen. So thank you guys for coming down. Absolutely. You can make a break for it. And my favorite thing, by the way, is Baxter, my furry little buddy. <laughs> Aww, Aww. catch up guard. Okay, thanks guys. Right, thank thanks. you, Sylvia. Okay, I'm gonna change my glasses here so I can get serious. I'm a serious. Okay, what else do we got? Um, we have a contract that requires agents to sign a five-year non-compete. Oh, it's like destroying my studio here. Oh, I get that. So a five-year non-compete. People are like, I'm not gonna sign a five-year non-compete. Well. The reality is whoever drafted that contract was not very smart. First of all, many states won't even uphold any non-compete, even if it is not too broad. And five years is too broad. Ain't nobody gonna uphold five years. So when I looked at it, they're like, call me like, did you sign this? I'm like, yeah, whatever. It's not going to be enforceable. Uh, it's a bluff. Or if it wasn't, if it wasn't drafted with the intention of being a bluff, um, it wasn't drafted by somebody who was very smart. Oh, I, don't, I don't need you guys. Who, if you're the guy, go ahead and hit me up in the comments, whatever. But I, agents, you just can't freak about all the fine print and all these contracts. As much as I want you to read it, and I'm glad that some people did read it and get, did catch it, I need you to disregard a lot of this stuff. It's not going to stand up if they would ever try to enforce it against you. They're not going to. If you haven't learned this by now, a lot of what the insurance companies do is bluff because they have all the leverage and they have all the money. If they sue us, we're going to cave. Most of us don't have the financial wherewithal to fight them. So the threat of being sued generally gets them what they want. So a five-year non-compete is too broad. If you look at the statutes across the nation, really three years is the maximum. Some are only two years. I think Utah might be only one year, but don't be freaking about a five year. Uh, we're entering March and United Healthcare's new servicing fee of $125 will be hitting people's bank accounts soon. So if you have recruited agents, taken the time to contract them, taken the company's time and money, to get them contracted in the system certified and they haven't sold even one case, they will be charged $125. Well, there's nothing to take it out of them. So that's gonna roll up to their GA, MGA, FMO, NMA. So the whole point here is that we all stop wasting our time and wasting each other's resources. So you still have time to go help that person sell one case, a Part D, a Med Advantage, or a Medicare supplement and save yourself that $125 fee. Okay, 
There is a Medicare Supplement Conference coming up, and that is the, I don't know what it is, 20th Annual, 15th Annual. It will be in Atlanta, Georgia this year, and it's going to be June 5th, 6th, and 7th. Now, the 5th is a free agent day, so as long as you register, they have so many tickets, agents can get in free. And then the 6th and the 7th, you have to pay for, and that's a little bit more higher level learning, a lot of FMOs, sponsors, carriers, CMS, at that part. But I recommend if you are in the area around Georgia that you make the trek over there, at least for the the free agent day on June the 5th. We will be down there live filming Rebecca's podcast, Insurance Now, and filming the wrap-up. We're also going to be interviewing some of the top people in the Medicare supplement industry at that event. If you'd like to be on our remote show that day, ask me in the comments and we will book you to be on the show. Um, People ask me like, is what what conferences are good? Which ones do you go to? And I, it is an important part of your career to take time out of the field and go to some of these educational events. Now you could spend all your time doing it. And some of the worst agents, that's all they do. We call them donut eaters. They just go to meetings, I swear to God, just to get donuts and coffee for free. So yeah, we don't want that guy and you don't wanna be that guy. But you also don't wanna be the guy that's so busy just going forward, the energizer buddy, that you don't, bunny, You don't take time out of the field, hit the pause button, and invest in yourself by going to some of these industry meetings. And there's a lot of great meetings. Okay, I'll revise that. There are a few great meetings. Most meetings are extremely mediocre. And there's some terrible meetings. Um, That being said, I do go to some great meetings, some mediocre meetings, and some terrible meetings by choice. Just because a meeting is terrible So like there was one they just had, I won't name the location so you don't know what it was. I go to that one about every other year. The meetings are ridiculous waste of my time. Okay, it's the same carriers putting up big money to talk about something that I don't want a piece of. But the cocktail parties and all the networking opportunities are really valuable. And that the right people are in the room to get the right answers and the, the industry intel. And it's worth my time to fly down there, take time out of the field to be there. So I recommend, if you ask me like, what's a good meeting for you to attend, depends on where you are in your, your career. So my son's new in his career, I'm gonna make a different recommendation than to somebody that's trying to transition like from Medicare into more life from other cross sales or somebody that's been in Medicare a long time and they wanna you know dig down deeper in their knowledge. I would recommend some different meetings. And if you don't know where to go, it's kind of hard to figure out where to go. Um, if, it, if that email doesn't hit your box at the right time or you have to find out far enough advance, you can get it on your schedule. So that's what I'm telling you right now to make that plan for June to come down to the MedSup. It's kind of a big year in MedSup because of MACRA, Medicare reauthorization and CHIP. I don't, I'm not good at the acronyms. You know what I mean. F and C going away. G and D changing, things are happening and there's a lot of fine print. So I think there'll be a good turnout just around this big seismic change in Medicare supplement plans and how that's gonna reverberate into the plan G rates, the plan D rates, and the plan N rates, the, the three that we're gonna talk about the most. Let's talk a little bit about plan N because it's not impacted by MACRA at all. Here's your shortcut, C, is gonna be D. F is gonna be G. N's not impacted. N is the best plan that you're not really talking about and you're not selling. N's the one I push the most, it's the one I personally sell the most, and I have some videos on N. If you look in our Medicare playlist on Gore Marketing YouTube channel, you can see some more on N, I love N. Um, Lost commissions, so, I mentioned this in the past, but most agents are losing money. There, there's cases they're not getting paid on, and we're really busy. Most, most sales agents are really good at selling, but they're not as good at the administration, um, the paperwork. So when you finally, or your staff finally figures out, hey, we didn't get paid on these cases, most of the companies have a timeline. And if you haven't found it out by then, you've walked away from it. So right now, in the dark days of winter, you know, when it's not really crazy and hectic, take a fine tooth comb to your commission statements, to your renewal statements. I know, I know it's a big job, but there's money right there. Rather than going out and 
turning up some new sales, go get paid on the cases you need to be paid on. And trust me, everybody has money they're not getting paid on. OEP, we're still in the middle of OEP and I'm really excited that I haven't heard any complaints. I haven't heard any rumblings from any of the carriers. I haven't heard anything bad out of CMS. Might mean I haven't heard it, but I think there's been in general great compliance with the spirit and the letter of the, the law that says don't market during AEP. Don't say, hey, if you're not happy, you can make a change. Don't do that. If people aren't happy, take advantage of the fact that you can make a change, but don't break the OEP marketing guidelines. And so far, that's been great. Um, I don't have anybody in my live audience today, so I can't take any questions, but I want to thank you guys for tuning in. And as you know, this industry is changing rapidly. That's part of the fun of it. If you get whiplash, you can't stand still very long. So join us again next week when I'll have all the updates and hopefully my sister will join me. Hey, I wanted to thank Medico Insurance Company for being one of our partners and giving me these awesome socks that say I'm all in so we can sell our socks off. Medico, right there. Love them. Love you, Medico. Medico has a great portfolio. We do a ton of dental, vision, and hearing. And of course, they have very competitive underwritten rates for your over 65 clients on Medicare supplements. So check them out. And they have a great e app with my enroller. Thank you for Medico for being one of our partners.